Good morning. Today is Tuesday the 14th of April. A few interesting facts. On the AD 70, it, the siege of Jerusalem began by Titus, the son of the then emperor, uh, who surrounded the capital with four Roman legions. In 1471, in England, the Yorkists under Edward IV defeated the Lancastrians at the Battle of Barnet. In 1906, the Azusa Street Revival opened that set the starting of uh, the Pentecostal movement across the world. And in 1986, there were the heaviest hailstones ever recorded, about one kilogram, that's 2.2 pounds. They fell in Bangladesh and sadly they killed 92 people. A couple of happy birthdays for two Scottish actors, Peter Capaldi and Robert Carlyle. It's happy birthday to them. In South and Southeast Asia, Indian cultures, it also marks today is New Year, where they celebrate the sidereal vernal equinox when the sun enters the constellation of Aries. Well, let us pray before we turn to our passage today in Mark's Gospel. Lord, guide us through your word. Speak to us afresh today, I ask. Let it be like a new year of joy and hope in you. Amen. Turn with me to Mark chapter Free. And I'm going to continue uh, reading where, from where we left off from yesterday, from verse 20 to verse 30. Then Jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him for they said he is out of his mind. The teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said he is possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and he spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, a kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself, he is divided and he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man and then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and the blasphemies of men will be forgiven them, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an evil spirit. This passage today um, Mark's uh, what's called some call Mark and Sandwich. It begins with Jesus with uh, encountering his family. And if I read on, it says in verse 31 that he, Jesus's mother and brothers arrived and he stood outside. It ends with him encountering his family. And in the middle, we have this encounter with these scribes who come from Jerusalem. And it's all about people trying to take charge and make judgments about who Jesus is, what authority he has over all things and right in the middle it says is he has the authority essentially to bind even the prince of darkness the setting starts off with jesus at a house he's in his, in his house and it's such a big crowd that he can't even eat hearing that he's there his family come and sees him because they've got this idea that he is out of his mind they think he's mad they think they're hearing all the reports about all that he's doing and they've come to take him away perhaps they're fearful for themselves or fearful for what these Jewish authorities might do with all the claims that Jesus is making. They think they want to take control of the situation. They think they need to have authority. Well, we know that Jesus doesn't respond at this moment, but he does later on. At this moment, then it moves, the scene moves to these teachers of the law and their opinion of Jesus. Not that he's mad. They think he's bad. They think he's evil. They think he's possessed by Beelzebub. Uh, Beelzebub is a, a reference really essential to Satan by the prince of demons he is casting out demons they say Beelzebub is a, a misspelling of the word with a phrase which means the Baal the prince and what the Jews did as a way of insulting that they changed it round and Beelzebub essentially means lord of the flies Jesus won't stand for this it's interesting he doesn't let it go he says he called them and spoke to them See, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And he will not stand for when people are calling what is good, evil. People sometimes call what is good, bad, and what is bad, good. 
And Jesus speaks into this in his teaching point. He tells him first that 20, I tell you the truth. You see, the family are not going to define what is true in this situation. The scribes are not going to be defined what's truth in this situation. But Jesus is. And he uses this phrase about what this sin, which we call a, a, the unforgivable sin, about people who... I tell you the truth, all the sins of people will be forgiven, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. This is an eternal sin. Many people have confused ideas about what that could be. Let me tell you off the, uh, on the, off the start of talking about that topic, that if you have worried that you have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, the fact that you're anxious and concerned about it, for me, tells me that you haven't. I believe it's when people are refusing the truth revealed by the Holy Spirit about who Jesus is, refusing to accept what is true, calling what is good bad. One commentator says this, to call what is good evil when you know well that it is good because of prejudice and ill will hold you in bondage and that is the worst kind of sin. It's the kind of sin which earlier on Jesus looked at the people who were angry and he was grieved at the hardness of his heart. It's like the hardness of a heart that you see a Pharaoh who had many opportunities to respond to God's call to let his people go, but refused, refused, refused. His heart was hardened. What an awful place to be when people refuse to accept who Jesus is. And I believe that is the eternal punishment for people who do not trust in Jesus. They go to a lost eternity where their sins are not forgiven. Well, who has the truth? To, who has the power and authority to call what is true? Jesus does. Not his family, not his scribes, but Jesus who tells the truth. I wonder what the lies or deceptions sometimes we hear from the world around us. The enemy may whisper in our ears. Our families can often say horrible things. We need to let Jesus' truth speak into our lives. And let his truth set us free. And it starts around looking to him, the one who has the authority to bind the strong man. The one who has the authority to deal with sin. The one who has the authority to set you and me free to a loving life eternal with him. We need to listen to him. And that mind sometimes ignoring the voices of those around us. To let Jesus' words of truth strike the note in our heart but also set us free. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, I pray your words of authority would speak into every heart and mind. Let's listen to this. Give us ears to hear what you're saying. Lord, to know that you will set us free. Forgive us, Lord, when we listen to the voices around us. Lord, I pray we'll be confident in your love, your power, your authority today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have a blessed day. Keep looking to Jesus.